Welcome to Seattle Bike Blog TV. I am your host, Tom Fukuloro, and I am joined by Maxwell Burton, who is co founder of the Seattle Pedaling Relief Project alongside Michael Lang. And uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about, in general, uh, what is the Seattle Pedaling Relief Project? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Tom. So, so we are a, a like an all grassroots uh, volunteer run um, organization, uh, and we're basically a, a group of cyclists who have gotten together to uh, figure out ways for the Seattle cycling community to um, fight food insecurity and to give back to their community through. Um, these different um, volunteer opportunities through uh, through different food banks in the Seattle area, and it's just a, it's a great way for people to learn more about food insecurity issues in their local community and neighborhood, and also um, really get to know their their neighbors and get to know some members in their community who they might you know not otherwise really interact with a lot. Um, and it really gives our volunteers, um, it, it lets them ride their bike, but like ride their bike with a sense of purpose, you know? So a lot of people are, you know, they have extra time on their hands, uh, and they, they really, they're feeling like that extra time should be, um, put to, um, good use in terms of, uh, giving back their community and making, uh, Seattle and the world a better place. So um, basically, it was kind of a, a different requests from the food banks to have us help with their kind of food re- food logistics, both both on the the back end and the front end. And it really um, it's been great for the food banks because having cyclists um, available to them um, makes them really really flexible in terms of like how much food can they pick up and when and um, just having you know an army of bikes available to them um, it it reduces their kind of logistics overhead a lot in terms of like securing volunteers who have access to cars and who might have limited time available Um, uh, with us we can kind of scale up and down um, how much um, capacity they need to both uh, go out and bring donated fresh produce into the food bank and also um, t- send out um, these kind of bags of food that are put together um, by the food bank to uh, let somebody eat very healthily for, for one week. And yeah, yeah. So how did this, this idea even begin? Um, what, what inspired yeah. you to do this? Right. So um, it's been kind of a long journey and a very educational journey. I had originally met Mike, but had totally forgot about it when I was helping you and Kelly move. Uh, <laughs> and then we were just like, thank you, by you the know, way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was fun. And like, oh, man, that was great. And I like the trailer that I use is is the same sort of trailer that I, I used to, to move after your furniture (laughs) yeah yeah this came out of uh, mike and i working together to um we were trying to put on the next seattle disaster relief trials um so that the disaster relief trials are it's basically it's a it's like a trial competition that's meant to simulate simulate a natural disaster happening in an area and the idea there is um after a natural disaster hits an area, um, cargo bikes and especially cargo bikes are going to be the most flexible way to transport uh, needed needed goods and metal so medical supplies and water and different things around. So one of the best things about bikes is how flexible and how small of a fr- footprint they have. So the idea is how do you train up a bunch of cargo cyclists who are interested in this sort of thing so that they can immediately be part of the, the response. Uh, Mike and I were originally gearing up in order to hold the next disaster relief trials uh, this year in September. And then guess what happens? Uh, A disaster. Happens, a disaster, <laughs> exactly. 
So, mm-hmm. like, as soon as the um, the school shut down, the sc- as soon as the school sh- system shut down, uh, Mike and I um, met again, and we basically just cleared our original notes completely and just started anew. And we were like, we're n- like, this isn't a trials anymore. This is no longer a disaster relief trials. This is a this is a disaster relief, you know, um, and we we both kn- knew that because Cascade shut down, because uh, Bike Works shut down, uh, both of those organizations have a huge dedicated base of volunteers who are still going to want to r- ride their bikes, and they're going to be, and they're also they're going to they're they're antsy to help. And I started reaching out to a few different food banks who were then ramping up their home delivery um, kind of systems. One of the big impetuses of this idea was the Thanksgiving event that you organize every year. And my my thinking was, oh, what if we did like a Thanksgiving but in reverse and also every week? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that's how actually I, I originally sold it to the Rainier Valley Food Bank. But the vast majority of volunteers that I have coming to help me out for every delivery event, um, they live right in that neighborhood. They're exploring their neighborhood, learning more about their neighbors, getting to know their neighbors, but then also learning about um, kind of the history of food justice uh, in their neighborhood and also just learning about the um you know, the, the food bank system. A good number of our volunteers have then went on to volun- to sign up for volunteerships in their local food banks. So this is also, um, it's, it's kind of, um, it's, it's raising the visibility of this super valuable um, social services and food security infrastructure that that we have here in Seattle. That's great. So if someone wants to help um, and join the cause, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, so the best way to do that is to go to our website and that's uh, sprp.bike. You can also go to our Instagram page and that is uh, pedaling pedaling, uh, relief project. So pedaling underscore relief underscore project. And both of those will point point you to our signup sheets. Um, and the sign-up sheets would just you sign up for um, to go on a, a a bike delivery with us at one of the food banks that we work with. We have delivery opportunities and volunteer opportunities on um, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and then on a few Sundays uh, every month, a couple of Sundays. Wow, it's a lot of work. I know. Yeah, this I. Mm. This has been so like this has been the most fun. This has been the funnest thing, and the most fulfilling thing that I've ever done in my life. And that's that's what's really driven me through working this hard and and putting this many hard hours into organizing and connecting and facilitating um, all these amazing ways that that cyclists can help. Um, their their neighbors in, in their in their communities here in Seattle. Are there other ways people can help other than hauling food? Um, do you need other yeah. kinds of volunteering? Right. Yeah. So I I'm looking. Um, I'm trying to put together a good system to allow people to um, volunteer with us, kind of on the back end. So that would be answering questions that other volunteers might have or uh, connecting with more food banks or um, kind of reaching out and asking uh, different uh, other grassroots organizations such as uh, there are a lot of these very small community uh, community run kitchens that that kind of cook food for everybody in the community and distribute it for free um, so one way one one great way for people to help is if they know an organization that needs um, help, delivery help, or just you know uh, really needs a way to to transport fresh produce or food or other 
supplies from one place or other, like medical supplies um, or like personal care kits and stuff from one place to another, definitely reach out to us and let us know. So does the um, Seattle Pedaling Relief Project itself um, need funding? Like what are its costs and do you need help with that or are you mostly yeah. focused on the organizations or how does that work? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. That It's been, everything has been happening so fast that uh, we're just kind of now starting to think about that. Um, we do have um, these fleets of trailers that we lend out to our volunteers. A big part of this is uh, how do we make cargo cycling, how do we kind of broaden the reach of cargo cycling? How, how do we make cargo cycling as inclusive as, as possible? And a big part of that is how do you turn pretty much any bike into a cargo bike? It's with a bike trailer. So we, we've been really focusing on letting anybody and everybody who is interested in volunteering for us, we, we've been reducing the, the barriers that, that they might come across in terms of like, oh, if, if they don't have a pannier, if they don't have a rack, if they even don't have a backpack, they can still volunteer with us because we'll provide them with a bike trailer that they can load bags bags into and and go out and and care for their neighbors. So that's a big big part of where the costs have been coming from is um, we we bought a fleet of five trailers um, about a month ago and that cost about five hundred dollars. Um, so Mike and I have been sharing that. Um, and then there's the um, you know uh, there's just like the, the human part of, of the costs of all this. Um, I, I've kind of given myself the, the freedom to make this like a full-time project for me over the summer, but there's going to, there's definitely going to be a, a time in which, um, I'll, I'll have to, um, start like pivoting away in terms of like, uh, figuring out what, what my next career is going to be. We're trying to figure out how people um, who, um, if they're not able to volunteer with us, but they still want to support us, we're trying to figure out how how people might be able to do that in terms of like a tip jar or or just some other way that that people can give uh, funds to us that we would then put into like buying gloves and sanitizer and more trailers and and other stuff like that and and possibly even. Um, supporting the, the people who are, are managing this. I want to empower the volunteers in each neighborhood to um, almost take ownership of the, um, the volunteer opportunities, uh, the, the community building aspect of it. And uh, so I kind of, I want to put together a system in which I'm giving, I'm, I have like a group of, of volunteer leaders who are on the ground at each food bank. And they're the ones who are uh, facilitating and managing the volunteers as, as they're showing up and as they're loading their bags and answering questions and working directly with uh, um, the food bank coordinators. And my, my end goal is to, is to kind of pivot and be more on the administrative side where I'm just making sure that everything on the top end is running smoothly, making sure that the volunteers are, are getting their um, like reminders that they have like a, 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 a delivery coming up at a certain time and also um, making sure that people can sign up easily and if they have any questions about the organization itself, answering those. But I really, um, I took a lot of inspiration from um, my time working with the, the major trailer project at Cascade, and a lot of a, the one of the key aspects of the major trailer project was uh, empowering local cyclists, especially young local cyclists, to be MTP uh, major trailer project ride leaders, um, mm -hmm. where you would have people, um, you would have um, you know um, young adults um, who were just out of high school or just out of college um, who 
went to the high school or went to the high one of the high schools in the area that the club is is supporting and uh, that way you have kind of uh, a direct connection of like mentor mentee between um, the the ride leader and the students and I was I was thinking along the same lines where I, I really want to empower um, my volunteers who live in the neighborhood to take more ownership of the the um, of the, the deliveries and the, the other kind of volunteer events that we have um, for that community, we have in that community for that community. So mm -hmm. it's this interesting little like um, uh, like chapter or cell structure where rather than this citywide organization uh, collecting volunteers from all over Seattle and sending them out again all over Seattle. I want to basically have this very um, intimate kind of community focus where I'm taking volunteer cyclists from the community and sending them back out in the community so they can learn more about, you know, their, their neighbors and the, the streets around them. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and talking to me about all this. This is very exciting and I wish you the best of luck. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, thank you and, and pedal on. Yeah, you too. Okay.